I'm in the center, it's good. Whatever you say, whatever, whatever. You say. It's good, it's good. Okay. Good morning, everybody. So we're on Daf Gimel. Uh, a few lines into Daf Gimel. Four lines from the top of the Amud, where it says, At Saifa Shmura. So what did we learn in the Mishnah? This is not here the Gemara begins discussing the Saif of Zman Kriyashma. The first opinion in the Mishnah, which is Rabbi Liyaz's opinion, that you can say Kriyashma until Saif Ashmura, which is the end of the first third of the night. Four hours into the night. Right? Okay, so the Gemara is going to discuss this. Got it? Taf Gimel. Right over there. My Kasova. My Kasova. What is the opinion of Rabbi Yezah? My Kasova Rabbi Yezah. What is Rabbi Yezah's opinion? I Kasova. If his opinion is Shalish Shmaris Havalaylo, that the night is divided into three parts. Lame. So why doesn't he clearly say Adar Bashois? That you could uh, say Shema until four hours into the night? And if his opinion is that the night has four parts, as we'll see later on Ahmed Bey's, we'll learn soon, there's a machlekes, if the night is divided into four parts or into three parts. So if he follows the opinion that it's divided into four parts, so So then the first part is uh, three hours. So why doesn't he clearly say that? Why is he saying talking about mishmaris? Let him just say clearly, how many hours you have to say Shema? So the Gemara answers. Right. The truth is, Kesava Sholish, Mishmar Esava Layla. Rabbi Yezah's opinion is that the night has only three parts. This is what he's teaching us. When Rabbi Yezah says, At Saifa Shmura, this is what he's teaching us. The Ike Mishmar is Berakia. These uh, parts of the night that are divided, why are they divided into these parts? There's a reason why the night is divided into three. As the Gemara will explain, because Berakia, by the Eibishter, that the night is divided into three parts. And the Ike Mishmar is Ba'ara. And the division of the night into these three parts is also recognizable here in this world below. So uh, he's telling you, Rabbi Yaz is telling you that the three parts of the night, he doesn't <coughs> want to just say the hours, but he's telling you that, that there's uh, parts of the night because this is something that you could use as a sign, you can notice it here in the world below, as the Gemara will explain right now. The Tanya says in another Braise, Rabbi Yaz himself says, Rabbi Yaz Oimeh, Shalosh Mishmara is Hava Laila. The night is divided into three parts. I'll call Mishmara Mishmara, and in each part of the night, Yeshiv HaKadosh Baruch Hu V'shoye Kari The Eivishter sits and roars like a lion. Shanem Aret says in the Apostle, Kashem Mimoraim Yishag, Hashem from His exalted place, roars, Umimoyim Kotshoy, and from His holy abode, Yiteng Koiloi, He lets His voice be heard, Shoig Yishag Al Noveyu, the Eivishter roars on his, on his home, which refers to the Beis HaMikdash, which the Gemara will soon bring what they, the Baskel and what the Eibishter says during the night. So here in this Pasik, it says the term Yishag, Sha'oig and Yishag, three times, which refers to the three times, the three parts of the night. The Simen Ladovar, and there's a Simen for this that we can see here in the world below, and this is what the Gemara said before, that you can recognize the, the, the separation of the three parts of the night here below. Mishmara Rishayna, in the first part of the night, Chamoir Noyer, the Chamoir, the donkey, lets itself be heard. Shniya, in the second part of the night, Klovim Tzayikim, the dogs are barking. Shlishis, in the third part of the night, Tinek Yaimnek Mishtei Imai, a child comes to be fed from the mother, the Isha, Misaperes, and Baila, and a woman begins conversing with her husband. People, that's the, the time when people wake, wake up in the morning and begin talking to each other. So this is the um, source of this idea that there's Mishmar is Lamaila and there's Mishmar is also here in the world below. So the point is the Braise here said Simen Ladovar. Simen Ladovar means today we have watches, a clock, you see, you see the time. 
But when it says here similar dalva, it's telling you that if you have any doubt of regarding the time during the night, so you can use these simonim to know what time it is. To know till when you can read Kriyashma, to know when it's the morning, when you can read Kriyashma Shal Shachris. So you have the Chamer, you have these things, that, uh, the Simonim that you can see here below. So now, the question that the Gemara is going to discuss is, so we have these three parts, but when it says that you can have a Simon to notice when the three parts are, what are we talking about? The beginning of these sections of the night or the ending of the sections of the night? My Kachosh of So in the Braise here, what was Rabbi Yezah referring to? And the Gemara questions, either way you're going to interpret this. If Rabbi Yezah was referring to the beginning of, the na- of these sections of the night, the beginning of the first part of the night, why is it necessary to have any simon? Or to, that's something you could know, you, can, you don't need any simon. The biggest simon is that uh, you see Tzai You see the stars come out and it's dark. So what's, what's the, why is it necessary to have any simon for that? If Rabbi Yezer was giving you the simon of when that section, that part of the night ends, so then the question is going to be, Why is it necessary to have a simon for the end of the last part of the night? You can see that as well. You can see it in the morning. It's Yimamahu. You see it becomes light outside. Elam. So the Gemara answers. The, the Gemara gives two answers. The first answer is Chashiv Saif Mishmara Rishayna. When he said before Chamer Nayer that the sound of the Chamer that is at the end of the first part of the night, which is something you can't notice on your own without a clock, and you have the simon of the Chamer. Utchila As Mishmara Achreina. And when he gave the sign of the child that comes to nurse from the mother, that's the beginning of the last part of the night. And then the simon of the Kloven Tzayakim, that's the middle of the middle section of the night, which would be Chatzais. Okay? Mm-hmm. Those are the three simonim that he gave here. Another option, another answer here is, Kulu No, he is being consistent in the simonim that he's giving. He's talking all about the end of the um, sections of the night. So the question is, As we asked, the last section of the night, you don't need a simon for that. You can see it's becoming light outside. Light outside. Why was he giving you the simon? This would be uh, useful. This is a simon that would be useful for somebody that is sleeping in a dark house. And he doesn't know. There's no windows or the shades are completely down. And he can't tell that it's beginning to become light outside. And he doesn't know if it's the time that he could say Shema yet. So even the Isha Mesaperes and Bailos of it's in the morning and his wife wakes up and they're beginning to converse. Or Vetinik Yenik Mishdei Imai, the children are beginning to wake up, a child is coming to nurse from the mother. Leikim Velikri, he knows it's time to get up and say Shema. Yeah, so this is the, why, why the simon is useful for the morning. The first answer, like uh, a source for taking Chatzayis. Maybe. M Tsois, M Tsi Isa. Yeah. Chlal, the Indian of is not only Chatzois, it's three times during the night. Yeah. So I can't say. So Rav Yitzchak Bashmul said in the name of Rav. So the Gemara now returns to this Indian. Gimel Mishmores Hava Laila, the night is divided into three parts. Val Kal Mishmar, U Mishmar. Yeshiva Kadesh Baruch Hu, and in each part of the night, the Ebishta is sitting, Bishoye Kari, and the Ebishta roars like a lion. Vaimer, what is the Ebishta saying? Oy Lebanim, how unfortunate are my children. Shabbavay Niseyem, as a result of their sins, a Chrafti as Besi, I destroyed my house, the Besam Mikdash, Vesarafti as Echoli, and I burnt the Hechol of the Besam Mikdash, Vehiglisim Levei Numasailam. And I have uh, exiled them amongst the nations of the world. Yeah, so this is the, uh, the Baskel, or the, the, the Ebishter himself actually. Here it says the Ebishter, soon the Gemara is going to talk about a Baskel, where there's a Baskel that says a similar thing. But here it says the Lashon that the Ebishter himself, three times during every single night, is, is roaring like a lion and talking about the Chorben Beis Amikdash. 
Tanya Amar Rabbi Yaisi. So in connection to this in the Gemara brings a story where it also mentions this idea that the Eivishter is, uh, is uh, bemoaning the Chorb Mabayis. Amar Rabbi Yaisi, Pa Machas Ayisi Mahalach Baderech. There was once that I was traveling on the way. V'nechnasti l'chorba achas m'chor b's Yerushalayim and I entered into a dilapidated house or broken down house from m'chor b's Yerushalayim in the city of Yerushalayim. L'espalo to Davin. Bo Elio zochel l'toiv So he had a, a, a visitor. Elio Anovi came v'shomar li ala Pesach and he came and stood at the door of this uh, broken down house and he waited for me. At shesiyantit filosi until I finished davening. Didn't want to interrupt his davening. So he waited there. When I concluded davening, Omali, he said to me, Shalom Alecha Rebbe. Peace to you, my Rebbe. Vamarti loi. So I responded to him, Shalom Alecha Rebbe, you may. Vamali, and Elio Anovi said to me, Bonai, my, my, Bni, my child. Mipne ma nechnasta lochur vizu. Why did you enter into this uh, broken down house? As we'll see soon in the Gemara, you're not supposed to go into a churva for various different reasons. Mm-hmm. I was looking for a place to daven. He didn't want to daven on the road where he could be distracted by what's happening on the road. He wanted to go into a private place where he could daven. So, um, Novi answers him, no, it would have been a better idea not to go into this chorba. You should have davened on the road. Hmm. So I answered him, no, I don't want to daven on the road. I was afraid. If I'm going to daven on the road, people that are past passers-by that know me are going to interrupt my davening. So Leo Novi answered me, you could daven on the road, and you daven at Filik Tzara, which the Gemara will bring later on in the Masechta, what that Filik Tzara is. You daven on the road, a shorter tefillah, that's a combination of all the brachas of Shemayin Esra. One bracha, they're combining everything together. So it's better to not daven the full davening, to daven at Filik Tzara on the road, than to enter into a churva. Mm-hmm. It's such a negative thing to enter into a churva, that it's better to daven on the road at Filik Tzara. Mm-hmm. So Ba'ay Sashah, so uh, Rabbi Yaisi says at that time, Lamadati mi menu I learned from Elio Anavi three different things. Lamadati, number one, I learned from him, Sha'inik Nasan Lukhorva. You shouldn't be entering into a broken down house. Vulamadati, I also learned from him, Shemispal in Baderech. That you are allowed to dive in the way. It's taka not preferable, it's not uh, but if you are Bidiyevid on the road, you could dive in the on the derech. When you have to daven in the road, you daven at Tfilik Tzara. Those are the three halachas I learned from Eliyahu and Navi. Now the Gemara continues the conversation between Eliyahu and Rabbi Yaisi. Now Eliyahu and Navi said to me, Bini my child, What voice did you hear in this Chorva? Eliyahu and Navi Kanera knew that he heard something, or he may have heard it himself, and he wanted uh, Rabbi Yaisi to share. What did he hear? Va'amar tiloyin, I answered him, Shomaiti baska. I heard a baskal, Shemanahemes keyoyna, which is crying like a yoyna, like a dove. Va'imeres, and the baskal is saying, Oy lebonim, Shabavaniseim achrafti es beisi, that with their sins I have uh, destroyed the beis hamikdash, v'sarafti es hecholin, I burnt it, v'higleisim lebeina umais. And they're exiled amongst the nations. So this, so this is a baskel that's not only three times a night. There are three times a night. It seems like it's two separate things. Three times a night, Abishter is roaring like a lion and saying this. But even besides that, during the day, on different occasions, there's a baskel that Abishter uh, that comes out and says the same thing. Va'amali, so Eliyahu and Novi answered me and said, I swear by your life and the life of your head. It wasn't only at that time that you heard it, that this Baskel says this, every single day. Three times a day, the Baskel is saying this. And the it's not only three times a day, 
Ela bishah she Yisrael nechnasen lebatik nesiyas lebatim midrashis. Whenever you didn't enter into the shul, va'einim and they answer yehe shme shme agadol mevayrach. They didn't answer the amen yehe shme raba. Hakadosh Baruch Hu men anei reishai. The Eivishton nods with his head. The Eimer and he says Ashrei hamelach shemen. Fortunate is the king that is being praised in his house in the, in the shul, kach like this that Yidna is saying, Amen Yeshmei Rabba. And Malay Laav, and how unfortunate the father is, Shehigla as Banov that he exiled his children. Va'oylehem Lebanim, and how unfortunate are the children, Shegalom al Shulchanavim, that have been exiled from sitting around the father's table. Yeah. So this is the, the baskel that uh, Rav Yaisi heard, and there's these baskels that come out when you say Amen Yesh Me Rabba. So it's, it's well known, the vart that's brought in the is going to this baskel, going to get to all the baskels. There's many different baskels that the Gemara talks about. Most of us don't hear this baskel. So what's the point of this baskel? Who is the baskel for? So the answer is that the Neshama hears the baskel. The Neshama of every year hears the baskel, and not only does the Neshama hear it, the Neshama hears it in a way that it actually has an impact on his, on his uh, Aveda B'Payal. And it's even explained in one place, in a Maimah of the Rebbe Rashab, that sometimes a person suddenly has an urge for something. And it may even be an urge for something physical, something even negative. A person has an urge to do something. And really where it's coming from is because his Neshama heard the Baskail. And then that baskel, <laughs> if a person is not in tune, so that baskel c- then could get translated in his gulf in something that is not necessarily related directly to the baskel. But if a person is in tune, so then he is he's sensitive to hear that baskel and actually hear the real message of the baskel. But a, a person is constantly feeling urges that are pushing him to do things, and which is a result of the baskel, the various different baskels that come out every single day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Talk to Gemara Vaita, now the Gemara returns because I mean the story was brought up because of the um, the Baskal that spoke about what the Abish just says during the three sections of the night, but because we mentioned the concept of the Khurva, so the Gemara is gonna say the halachas of why Taki should not enter a Khurva. So there's a Braisa that says, There are three reasons why a person should not enter into a broken down house. Because it raises a suspicion that he may be entering there to do some immoral activity. Because it may it collapse on him. And because of mazikin, which are shaden, that may be found in this place. So now the Gemara will explain, why do we have to have three different reasons why a person is not allowed to enter into a churva? The Braise says that there's a suspicion that you're... That you're Making on yourself, the tape claimishum apilas. Why why isn't the reason the simple reason mapilas that you don't walk it's a, it's a danger? Don't walk into a broken down house, it may fall on you. So effort the gemara bechadati. It's a house where one wall collapsed, but the rest of the structure is in pretty good shape and there's no uh, there's no fear that it's gonna collapse on you, so it's safe. It's safe to enter into the house. So that reason that it may collapse on you is not enough. The tape clay, the next page, you got it? Mm-hmm. On base. Top of the page. The tape clay, Mishum Azikin. So then, the reason, the second reason that there are shadim inside this um, Churva should also be enough. So the Gemara answers, Betray. No, if a person enters with two, so with, with two people, there are no Mazikin. One person alone, the, the shadim could harm him, but with two, there's no issue of being harmed by Mazikin. If it's a case that two people are entering, so then so then there's no suspicion of any immoral activity. Why do you need the third? The third reason would not be relevant in this case. Right? This, is, this is the Gemara in, uh, in Kedushan and other places regarding the Isra of Yichud. Yichud is only when a man is with a woman secluded, just one man. But if it's Trey, there's no Chashad, there's no Yichud. So the Gemara answers, no. But Trey Upritzi. If you have Trey, if you have two people, but these two individuals are Pritzi, they're immoral people, so then the concept of Yichud does apply, even with two. 
So therefore you need the third reason. In such a case, the reason of Mapalus does not apply. It's a new house, it's a house that is, is pretty, it's a safe structure. And there's no Mazikin because it's two, but they're Pritzi, so therefore there's, there's, there's still a Chashat, and therefore you shouldn't enter. I'm not here Shemayim, so why are they listening? Huh? I'm not here Shemayim, so why are they Okay. But if they're not pritzim, then it should work. Huh? If they're not pritzim, then it should work. Correct. Yeah. But one, is pritzim. But one, is pritzim. one of them is pritzim. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if then they didn't apply. Applies because the other one could 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 guard him. Zaktiv gemara vayte. So now he explained why we, why one reason is not enough. But the gemara now asks further. Mipnei am apayles. That we, we said that the, that the problem is that it may collapse on him. Why would the other two reasons together not be enough? That entering into a uh, dilapidated house, there's a chashad, and there are mazik in there. Those two reasons together should be enough. So the Gemara answers, but today, okshedi. If there are two people that are entering, and those two people <coughs> are not pretty, those two people are kosher people, the moral people. So then there's no chashad by today people that are kosher. And there's no mazikin because it's two people that are there. And mazikin will not harm two people together. So therefore you have to have the reason that it may collapse on him. Mepnea mazikin. The price says the reason of mazikin. The combination of these two reasons of chashad and mapeles. <laughs> that there's a suspicion, or that it may fall, it may collapse, why are those two reasons together not enough? So the Gemara answers, <laughs> that there's no, there's no uh, concern that it may collapse because it's a new, um, an, uh, it's, it's, it's a safe structure, it's pretty new. One wall collapsed, but it's new. <laughs> and it's two individuals that are kosher, so there's no chashad. So therefore you have to have the reason of mazikin that you may not enter for that reason. But didn't we say before that if two people are entering, there's no mazikin either, because mazikin will not harm two people together. So the Gemara answers, no, it depends. There are cases where the mazikin could come to harm a person, even if there are two. The Mekoimon Chashinon, if it's a place where the mazikin, this is their place where they reside, this is their place that they're comfortable, so that's a place that the mazikim don't uh, feel threatened by two human beings that enter. They'll remain there and they could be mazikim. Mm-hmm. So Teisus explained earlier on when the Gemara said when the, that it's Trey and there's no mazikim, it was speaking about a churve which the mazikim did not take up permanent residence yet. Mashenkin here, the Gemara is talking about a different kind of churve which may be a churve that the, the, the uh, mazikin took up residence there and therefore they're not in a spall of two people entering. It's a little to see that because it's, it's a new place. Yeah. Okay, so chadati could mean uh, how, how long does it take mazikin to take up residence? I'm not sure. I mean, uh, <coughs> a month is long enough. I mean, after a month's right, time, a broken wall. Huh? Nobody lives there. there's one broken wall, nobody <laughs> lives there, and after a month, the mazikin can take up residence. <laughs> However long it is, well, it yeah. It doesn't necessarily mean new. It can mean like huh? just a solid structure. That you know yeah, it's a okay. Solid structure. Okay, yeah. it doesn't yeah. literally it's like mean no. Mazikin outside, sometimes even two people. Yeah, yeah the Gemara will discuss, we'll see, it's going to talk you later about it, yeah. Okay, by say no, another option the Gemara says, We can say that really we're talking about that there's one person that's entering, and there's a, it's a Chor Bacharate, it's a uh, structure which is still safe, it's new, and there's no concern that it's going to collapse. But what are we talking about? The Koi B'dabra. This is a churva that's not in a city, but it's far out in the field. The hosom over there, a churva that's far away from the, pl- the city where people live, mishum chashad leka. The chashad is not as much as it is in a city. Over there, there's a suspicion, a person entering into this churva, that he may be meeting someone over there, and for immoral activity is not, is not there. The ha'isha bedabra lo A woman is not usually found over there in this place that's far out in the field. So over here in such a place, there's no chashash mishum apeles, it's a new structure. There's no chashash for immoral activity, and therefore brings the third reason that there are still mazikim there. And other a place which is far out in the field, there may be more chashash uh, of mazikim, that it's a place where mazikim are more even in a place where there's a city. Yeah. Okay, that's the conclusion of the union of a churba. 
Now the Gemara returns to the, to the night, the sections of the night. As we said, as the Gemara alluded to before, there is a machlaikis. When you get to the night, if it's divided into three sections or into four sections. So here the Gemara brings the source of this machlaikis. The, the, the night is divided into four parts. Divrei Rabbi. Rab Nasan's opinion is Sholosh. The night is divided into three parts. My time at Rab Nasan. What's the reason for Rab Nasan's opinion? Because the Pasik says, Vayovoi Gidoin. Gidoin came. Gidon was one of the Shaiftim. Umeya Ish Asher Itoi. And he came with a hundred men along with him. Bekitseya Machna at the end of the Machna. When did he arrive there? So the Pasik says, Roish Hoashmeires Hatichaina. At the beginning of the middle section of the night. Tana, so, so we learned, Ain't Tichaina, Ela Sheyesh, Lefane, Lachara. You could only say that there's a middle part of the night if there's one before, if there's a part before and a part after. So then you have the middle part of the night. So in this Pasik, you see that the night is divided into three, and there's a middle part of the night. Verebi. Rabbi that says that there are four parts to the night, how would he interpret this Pasik? What, what, what's the meaning of the middle part of the night? My tichaina. Achas minatichaina shebitichainais. It refers to one of the middle parts of the night. There's one before, there's, there's one after, and there's two, two parts of the night in the middle. And the Pasik is referring to one of the parts of the night in the middle that uh, Gidon came. Rab Nasan would, would re, uh, respond to that. Miksif Does it say that in the Pasik that there's, there's two parts and he came one of the two parts? Does it say that? Tichaina Ksif. The Pasik says Tichaina, which implies it is one middle section of the night. So this is the source of Rab Nasan. My time with the Rebbe, what was the source of Rebbe to say that there are four sections of the night? Om Rab Zrika, Om Rab Ami, Om Rab Yeshua Ben Levi. So the source of Rebbe was as follows. Cause of Echadaime, there's one Pasik in Tilim where it says, Chatzais, Laila, Okum, Lohoides, Locha, David Amalek says, I wake up at Chatzais to thank Hashem, Al Mishpatates at Kecha, on the Abish's righteous judgment. The Cause of Echadaime, in another Pasik it says, Kidmu, Einai, Ashmurais. I wake up earlier, Ashmurais. Ashmurais means that there are, he wakes up early enough that there are still two parts of the night left. Okay. So now how do you touch this? Do these two psukim fit with each other or not? Okay, Tzad, how would these two psukim make sense to fit with each other? Arba Mishmaris, Hava Laila. It only makes sense if you say that there are four sections of the night. If there are four sections of the night, so then each, each section has three hours. Right? Let's take the hours, and the, we always divide the, the day and the night. It will use the model of 12 hours, right? So if you divide the night into 12 hours, if there are four sections of the night, so each section is three hours. So if he's waking up at Chatzais, there are two, two Ashmaitis left, there are six hours left, which are two sections of the night that are left. So the two Psukim are saying the same thing, it fits. But if you're going to say that there are three sections of the night, so then each section is four hours. So when he woke up at Chatzais and there are six hours left, there's only one and a half sections of the night that are left over. Only six hours left. So how does it say, that he wakes up and there are still two sections of the night that are left? That's Rabbi Zraya. Rab Nosen, how does Rab Nosen respond to this proof? Savalak Rabbi Yeshua. Rab Nosen follows the opinion of Rabbi Yeshua, the Tnan, we learned in the Mishnah, that's later over here in Brochus, Rabbi Yeshua, Oimer, Rabbi Yeshua <coughs> says, Ad Shalishois, you can say Kriyashma until the beginning of the third hour into the day. Shekein derech Malachim Lamed B'Shalishois, it's the derech of Malachim that they wake up at the beginning of the third hour of the day. So therefore, when we say that David Melech got up in the morning and there, were till, there, were till, there was still the amount of two sections of the night left over, that includes the additional two hours of when the kings wake up. So we have Shis Delilah. There are six hours of the night, which are still not two full sections of the night because that's, uh, it's four, each section is four hours. So you have four hours and another two hours, which is still just a half of another section. So there's Shis Delilah, but the Vitarti Diyamama. We also count another two hours 
which the kings sleep later on into two hours into the day. So if you include those two hours, so there's another six hours until the kings awake in the morning. And David the Malach is saying, when I wake up at Chatzais, there's still six hours left for the kings to wake up. Uh, again, there's still eight hours. There are still eight hours for the kings to wake up if you include the other two hours of the day that the kings wake up. But that's kind of cheating because like we were first starting with 12 hours of a night now you yeah. turned it into 14 hours of a night. Okay, so it's not... Uh, but, but it's David HaMelech. He's a king. He's a melech. <laughs> So it's not the night. You're right. It's, it says Ashma. It says Kidmu Eina Ashmairais. It didn't say. It doesn't. But in the pasuk Ashmairais, Ashmairais. It didn't say Befeirish Ashmairais of the night. Ashmairais. When I, when I wake up, there's still the length of eight hours, which is the two sections of what the does night. What does mean? Uh, What's the little touch of Ashmairais? Two sections of the night in a Hanami. Correct. But. So for Amphret, he's saying it includes those two hours of the day, and it's the length of the two Ashmaidas of the night. Why can't you about to say that it's half of the... Ah, oh, that's one of the Tirutzim. Let's see, right here. Okay. Rav Ashi Omar, I think this is what you were about to say. I'm sorry, I didn't hear the, the conclusion of your point. Rav Ashi Omar, Rav Ashi says, Mishmano Palga. When the Gemara, when the, when the Pasuk says, Ashmaida, is it's referring to four hours, Plus another two hours, um, uh, 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 one section and a half a section. Nami mishmaris karelu. That could also be referred to uh, in a plural term as mishmaris, because it's more than one. It's more than one. It's one and a half, and that's called ashmaris. That's the point you were trying to say. Yeah. So those are the two pshatim here, and this is the source of this whole union of ashmaris. Okay. Now, since the Gemara brought up a statement from, a, from an Amaira here, Rab Zrika, Amrab Ami, so the Gemara brings another statement from the same Amaira, which is an unrelated Indian, and then the Gemara will return to this, to, to this subject that we're speaking about over here. Amrab Zrika, Amrab Ami, Amrab Yeshua ben Levi. Ein Oimrim Bifnea Meis, Elo Dvarav Shal Meis. If there's a person, if there's a dead person in the room, you don't speak words in front of this mace, only things that, are, that pertain to this mace. Regarding him, regarding the things that have to be done to bury him and so on. But other things you shouldn't be speaking in his presence. Omar Rabbi Bakahana, Rabbi Bakahana explained, Lo This only refers to the fact that you shouldn't be speaking in his presence. And Rashi here explains that this is like the idea of Loyig Larosh. Just like when you walk into a Beis you're supposed to talk in Yitzitzis because... It's not you're mocking people that are not in a position where they can fulfill mitzvahs. It's the same also when you're saying divrei teira in front of the mace and the mace can no longer learn teira. Avomili da alma, if you speak any other things and any other conversation, less lumba. That doesn't bother us. It may not be the nicest thing to just have convers- idle conversations in his presence, but that's not what this statement was about. But another opinion is, The Kiddush over here is that even you're not allowed to speak in his presence. Definitely to stop have idle conversation in the presence of a mace. And this mace is thinking, why are you talking to Shtosim in my presence? It's, it's not, not respectful and it's, uh, you have to take, it's not covered a mace and you have to take care of the burial of the mace and a person is standing and speaking Mili Dalma. But, and, and the Chiddush was, even the Vretari, you shouldn't speak in his presence. But definitely you shouldn't be speaking Mili Dalma. Now the Gemara returns back to the Pasek that it brought before regarding David Melech, one of which was the proof that we brought regarding the sections of the night. So the Gemara asks the question, Did David and Melech get up in Chatzais in the middle of the night? From the beginning of the night he woke up. The Pasuk says, I wake up by Neshev at evening when it becomes dark. And that's when I, 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 I dive into Hashem. So the Gemara interrupts and explains, Neshev how do you know that the word Neshef means at the beginning of the night? There's another Pasuk where it says, B'Neshef, Ba'erev, Neshef, which is Erev, which is in the evening, Erev Yaim, when the day ends and it's evening, B'Ishain, Laila, Va'afela, when it becomes dark. So I see that Neshef is the beginning of the night. So this is our question. When did David HaMelech wake up? At Chatzais? Or at the beginning of the night? Omar Avaishi, Omar Avacha, so Avaishi answers in the name of Avacha, Hochi Ka'omar. The pshat is as follows. 
he never slept past Chatzais, which means usually or sometimes David HaMelech would wake up earlier. He would get up already at the beginning of the night. But even if he slept later, by Chatzais, he never got up later than Chatzais. Rabzeira Omar, Rabzeira gives a different teretz. At Chatzais Lailo, until Chatzais, Hayim Isnam Nim Kisus. David Melech would uh, sleep, or not really fully asleep, but he would um, doze off. That's the word? Yeah, yeah. okay. In Yiddish is at gedremelt. He would, he would doze off like a, uh, like a horse. A horse doesn't sleep a deep sleep. He sleeps a very light so sleep, sleep, half sleep awake. Sleep huh? standing. Sleep standing and half awake. Okay. So the first part of the night, he would just sleep a light sleep like a horse. And Rashi says that even while he was sleeping kisos, he was learning taita. Okay, so he was able to learn taita in that state of half asleep. Okay, and that's and that's what the pasuk means when it says kidamti b'neshev ashaveya. Mikan ve'ele chayim is gabakadi. And then at chatzay's time, he would get he would fully wake up and he would get up strong like a lion. Ravashi Omar, Ravashi gives a third teretz. At Chatzai Slaila, he was already awake before. But until Chatzai Sayyayisik B'divrei Teireh, he was learning Divrei Teireh. And then Mikan Ve'eleich, beginning from Chatzai, Beshireis V'sishbachais, he would sing and praise Hashem for the rest of the night. So when would he sleep? Get to Shaila. <laughs> during the day? You're not supposed to sleep during the day. Right. Yeah. I said, the Pasuk says clearly, Kidanti B'na Sheva Shabaya, not Limad Diteira. Right. Ashaveya, it uses the expression of Ashaveya. It's a very good question. It's a very good question. Yeah. Ashaveya means what? Uh, to, da- to, to scream out, to, to daven, to cry out to Hashem. To learning. Yeah. yeah. Okay, good Shaila. So, the Gemara Vaiter, now the Gemara is going to question this, this um, term of Neshef. The Neshef Ortuhu is Neshef Take nighttime. Ho Neshef Tzafruhu. We find in a different Pasik that Neshef refers to morning. Dichsev Ayakim David and David Amelech in one of his battles had uh, the went and uh, hit them. Meha Neshev Ada Erev. So he was there out in the battle from Neshev, which Lachaira means from the morning, the Ada Erev Lumachrasam until the following evening. My love, don't you think, Mitzafra, Vad Lelia. The word Neshev means morning until the following uh, night. Loi. So the Gemara answers, no, that's not the Pshat here. He was out in the battle from, from one night until the following night. So the word Neshef over here also means the night. But Ihachi, Frakta Gemara, if so, so Lichtaiv, why wouldn't the Pasik use the same term? Mea Neshef, Ada Neshef. That he was out in battle from Neshef until Neshef, from one night till the next night. Oi, Mea Erev, Ada Erev. If it uses a different term, it, it implies that Neshef is morning and Erev is night. El Omar, Rove, so Rove answers, Trey Nishvi Havi. The, the term Neshef could be used both for the morning and for the night. There are two, there are two meanings to the word Neshef. Neshef Lelia, <coughs> Noshef Lelia, the word Neshef, Rashi here says, the word Neshef means when something is removed from its place, when something changes over. Okay. So Neshef Lelia, the night ends, Vasi Yamama, and it's morning. Noshef Yamama, the, the day ends, Vasi Lelia, and night, and night comes. So the word Neshef could be, it doesn't mean not night and not morning. It means to move away, to, to remove what was here and to enter into a new uh, stage. Dr. Gemara, the David, Mia Viyada, Palga Delala Amos. Did David Amelech know exactly when Chatzais is? <coughs> right, if David Amelech is getting up at Chatzais, they had no clocks. How did David Amelech know when Chatzais is? Okay, interesting question. I mean, the Gemara before brought it as a simon, the Klovim Tzayakin. Okay, that the dogs are barking, and that's how you could know. But the Gemara asks this question, and David Amelech had a much better simon than the yes, dogs barking. Right, the palace, sure no dogs there was no dogs in that area. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, there was no dogs to disturb, disturb David Amelech. Yeah. Okay. Now the Gemara's question is based on something even more. And Amesha Rabbeinu himself didn't know when Chatzais is. When it came to Marcus Bechayres, he says about Chatzais time will be the Mark. Why does it say Chatzais? Why does it say Chatzais? Is the pshat that he was repeating what David was saying? Is the pshat that he was repeating what David was saying? Hashem said Kechatzais and he said Kechatzais. Can't say that. Mi ikis veke kamishmaya. Is there any doubts in heaven? 
So there's a, the, why, why would the Abish just say Kechatzais? The Abish should definitely told him that the Maka of Amak's Pachetis will be exactly Bechatzais. Ela the Omar le Bachatzais. The Abish just told Moshe Rabbeinu that the Maka will happen at Chatzais exactly. Va'asa iu va'oma Kechatzais. And he's changed from what the Abish told him and told Parai Kechatzais. Okay, so Alma Mesapkele. So if you see from here that he had a suffix. So Tesis explains why, why didn't Moshe Rabbeinu want to say Bach Hatzais? Even if he doesn't know, but why doesn't he want to repeat exactly what Ebesha said, Bach Hatzais? Because if he would say Bach Hatzais, and in Mitzrayim, Paray, and they had their clocks or their ways of knowing the time, and they would think that he was off, they would say to him, no, it didn't happen at the exact moment that you said. So, so therefore he said, it's not a that he, he said, huh? so it's not a that he didn't know. He said it, maybe he knew and he said it for them. Like uh -huh. I hear what you're saying. Okay. Yeah, that's the Pshat that Taisa says there. Okay. Okay, I hear your question. Huh? If he didn't know, he would have been able to prove it. No, it could be he knows Beruchnius. But he can't prove it to them Bekashmias. There's a sikha from the Rebbe about it. In Chelech Chafalaf. I'll take a look at that sikha. The Rebbe discusses this thing in Barichis. Alma Mesapkele. So we see here that Moshe Rabbeinu did not know. V'david have a yoda. And David did know. He woke up Chatzais. How did he know? And for the Gemara, David Simona Havale. David had a sign. Domer Rav Achiba Bizna Omer Rav Shimon Chasida Kinoir Hayatolu Lemaila Mimitasa Shal David. There was a harp that was hanging hanging above the bed of David Amelech. Vekiven Shehigia Chatzais Laila. When the time of Chatzais came, Ba Ruach Tzfeinis, a wind out of the north came, Vinay Shevis Boy, and came blew into this harp. O Menagen Meilov, and it began. A melody came out of this harp from its own. And miyad immediately haya oimid vaisig b'teira. David the Melech got up and began learning teira. At shalla muda shachar until the morning star came up. Ki v'shalla muda shachar. As soon as the morning star comes up, what happens? What's the first thing David the Melech is busy with? He's busy with the yidden. He's busy with the taking care of what Klal Yisrael needs. Nicht misuchach mi Yisrael etzloi. The chachamim of the yidden enter to David the Melech and Omruloi. They say to him. They said to him, Adeneinu HaMelech, our master, the king, Amcha Yisrael, Tzrichim Parnasa. Your nation, the Eden, need Parnasa. Amar Lehem, David HaMelech answers them, Luchu vehisparnasu zeh mizeh. They should go and be misparnas one from the other. The business that, should, that they do should be amongst themselves that they could create an economy, a sufficient economy, where one is buying and selling from the other all amongst themselves. Amrulai, so they answered David Melech, no, it's not going to work. Eina kaimitz must be a sari. A kaimitz, a kaimitz is a fistful, right, by the carbon mincha. A small uh, uh, amount of a kaimitz is, is not enough to satisfy a lion. So just an economy amongst us Yidin alone will not be sufficient to make Parnassah for the Yidin. Ve'ena bayr mismale mechulyasa. And if you want to fill a pit from the sand that's on the side, from a, from a mountain of sand that's on the side of the pit, it will not be enough to fill the, the entire pit. There are two pshatim. There's actually two pshatim in Chulyasai. One pshat is that if you dig and you empty yeah. and, and you create a pit and then you try to refill it with that same sand that you emptied it from, it won't fill up completely. Again, it expands the sand that huh? comes out. I, I can't explain it to you physically. I'm just telling you the pshat that it says. Maybe there's a pshat why that is. Some of the sand gets left out. But another pshat is that to fill a pit with the sand that you find beside it, it will not be enough to fill it up. So they were telling him there's no a monk to make an economy just amongst ourselves and not with the goyim around us as well, it will not work. So David Amalek tells them, Luchu Pishtu Yedechem Bigdud. So then you have to go and uh, into a battle, with the, with the with a group of uh, with an army to go and, and fight and conquer land, and then you can expand the economy in the, in the land around. Miyad, Yayitz, and Bachitayfel, immediately they would go and seek advice from Bachitayfel. And then, Vinim Lochim, the Sanhedrin, they would take permission from the Sanhedrin to go out in the battle. <laughs> and then, Vashail and Burim Vitumim, they would ask by the Urim Vitumim whether they should go on out in battle. This happened every day. <laughs> huh? Interesting, this, huh? This aggressive <laughs> warning. <laughs> aggressive economy. Yeah. 
Okay. I think we'll stop over here. This uh, over here will discuss this Indian, bring the sources for this Indian, but just to leave you off with a question to think about, if there anyway is going to ask by the Urim V'tumim, so then why do they have to seek the advice of Achitaifel? They have the Urim V'tumim to give them a clear answer. Because you have to start with the, huh? the Kehli Gashmi. So first you start with the advice of Achitaifel. Huh? You don't the, the urim All the time. Yeah, if he says no, then it's no. If he, uh, if he says yes, then you ask Okay, we'll see soon what the advice of Achitayv is. It's not so popular. Why does a Shimer say Tehillim if they're not supposed to say Torah? In the presence of a mess. Right. That's special mess, though. Huh? Tehillim? Say Tehillim? No, it's for this. No, it says you should be doing it every time. It's for the Shimer. It's for the Shimer. It's for the Shimer. It's for the Shimer. Then he has a lechayda shtifel shayla. It's a leig l'rosh. The presence of the mess. Ha, rosh here he brings a leig l'rosh. The minig is in the presence of a mess. You say to them, the shmire. Huh? Because it's not leig l'rosh. It's I'm doing something you can't do. It's a halacha that's brought in Shulchan Aruch in Yeh Dedeya. I'll check it up in Yeh Dedeya. It says loyamaisi yamlukai. That's by the shana. It also means that it really. It also. After, after and they could also learn Taita in Gan Eden. Oh, yeah. A mess also goes up in Gan Eden and learns Taita, but it's not the same Taita that we learned below. We just learned in the Bas Ligani mind with the Nisham Islamayla listening to us learn Taita below because they can't learn the Taita on the same level. Regarding the question of Ishavera, it's maybe according like it says by the Shabbat. Which question? Which question? Ishavera, Ishavera is that he's crying out to Hashem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not Taita. The Bas Ligani says that his Taita was also crying out to Hashem. It was even more still. And he said the the tayra and it brought about yeah. rain. Yeah, so it's Tilim Til- itself, which is from David Amelach, right. is side tayra and side filler. It's a combination of both. What's um, according to Rashi's answer? Yeah. You cannot even ask that, so that what the Demar give another answer for this theory. Yeah. Kiddush Hashem, right? Be sometimes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.